I always say that's kind of what I know how to do is making films. I don't really know how to do anything else. Oh, well, I'm a good gardener. So I'm a kid from New Jersey, a small town, exit seven of the New Jersey Turnpike. Nobody in our circle ever went to college, but I really wanted to go. Julia's journey from a working class kid, the daughter of a butcher and a nurse in a working class neighborhood in New Jersey, to becoming one of the great documentarians of our time. It's just an incredible journey. You know, when I was a young woman, a young girl, uh, you could either be a teacher, a nurse, or a secretary. Those were basically what you could be. This is pre-women's movement, because I started college in 1964. Growing Up Female was actually my senior What's project at Antioch. Every young woman in Terry's high school is required to take a six-week course from her guidance counselor on the subject of marriage. I would say a young wife should be neat and clean and attractive as possible. The husband should make the major decisions. The wife should assist, maybe, if he asks his, her advice. But the major decisions are his. The wife should be uh, at least understanding. Whatever his decision is, she should go along with it. Also, I believe that a wife should not expect the husband to do any ho housework, like wash dishes, clean the house, uh, do any of this menial task. Growing a female is just before the women's movement hit. Methadone is during the heroin crisis of the 70s, which was largely African-American and working class people. America doesn't have a drug culture. It is a drug culture. And if we want something different, we're going to have to change our society in some fundamental ways. They're more than just old films. They're films that are snapshots of American history, and especially Midwest and Ohio history. This beautiful thing about growing up female, but also about so many of Julia's films, is that she evokes real people. She does portraits of real people and lets us grapple with contemporary issues through the lives of actual human beings who we get to know. They told me that they had to be here two years, away from their family, no extra pay. I made it their house, they made it my home. Julia's films really grapple with questions of like, how can people have a decent life if they're not rich, if they're not a billionaire? I'm a working class kid. Did I ever learn labor history in school? Did, did I ever get it from my parents even? I didn't really learn about labor history and the importance of it in shaping our country, but I wanted to know it. Like, I wanted to know my history. All the films come directly out of things I wanted to know for my own life, for my own questions that I faced during the different eras of my life. Being in a left-wing movement myself, I was really interested in finding out how people in earlier left-wing movements how they sustained their beliefs, or did they sustain their beliefs even in the hard times. So we went to people who had joined the American Communist Party. Working class, the capitalist class has nothing in common, nothing. You know, and you'd ponder that. Oh right, them son of a bitch is up there eating the filet mignon and we're down here eating burnt liver. I think what makes for great documentaries is real curiosity, where the filmmaker actually cares. Weren't you scared? Weren't you? No. I didn't see anybody around with trench coats and things. A lot of the films I've made explore class, race, and gender. But A Lion in the House is about kids fighting cancer. But as soon as you really go into depth on what that looks like in the lives of five diverse families, Right away, you see racial differences, you see class differences, you know, you see the differences in people who have, are living with economic hardship. In my life, I've always been sheltered by my mother and my stepfather, and this is something that my mother couldn't change or take away from me, so it made me stronger. It made her stronger and me wiser. Mm -hmm. You can do anything when it comes to your child. I really rely on Julia's instincts 
about people, about story, about which direction to go in. Now, American Factory is it really tries to be fair to all the points of view that we encountered. The sort of power struggle between China and America has been going on most of the 21st century. It's one of the big stories of the 21st century, right? So that we thought the most valuable thing we could do is let you see what that's like for the Chinese, for the blue collar Americans, for the blue collar Chinese, for the management, and even for the Chinese owner, who's a multi-billionaire. Where you sit today used to be a General Motors plant, and now there are over 1,000 employees working here. Is this a union shop? It is our desire to not be. We have told, generally speaking, Midwestern stories about Midwestern people, and there aren't very many of us um, doing that. I'm really proud of those movies, and I think they show that we learned it on our own terms. We didn't go to a big film school. We didn't live in the New York and L.A. community. You know, we weren't shaped by that. We were shaped by the Midwest, by Ohio, and by kind of doing it by our own bootstraps. And I think that shows in the movies, and I'm certainly very proud of that.